couple grown men sitting off the side of the road in a, in a little car in a, in a hell storm. <laughs> Not embarrassed, Winston. This get under there. The hair clippy? Yeah. Oh, you're just a heavy baby. We're going for morning jogs. Winston's not coming with us because, well, he's uh, he's not fit. He's got too Sorry. many rolls. Sorry, bro. You got you got butt rolls. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you got too many back rolls, man. <laughs> He looks embarrassed now. Aww. He's like, oh man. Look, Winston. <laughs> we missed all your little funny moments and little fat rolls. <laughs> See when we get back, Winston. You just hang out. Don't work too hard. Stephanie, what do we got here? Uh, we have a veggie quiche. Guys, I'm not sure I've even had a quiche before, but I just ate this thing and it was delicious. The only thing that would make it better would be bacon, but. Or some ham. Yeah, or some ham. Guys, Stephanie is like a food blogger type person. This, uh, am, I, am I wrong in saying that this, you did a video on this? Uh, no, you're right. Where can everyone go watch your um, well, you can go out to YouTube. Man. Whoa, wait a second. I just started my own YouTube account. It has one video. <laughs> oh my, guys, we got to get her some like views just out of sympathy here on mm -hmm. our quiche. Go over there. What is it? Healthy Chew. It's just the Healthy Chew. Thanks for making that quiche, honey. It's delicious. You're welcome. I'm glad you liked it. Got an intruder here into the compound. I've seen him around quite a few times. He's thinking about getting in the in the yard right now. I may have to sick Winston on him. This has been a weird week weather-wise. I mean, if you've been paying attention to the news, you know that we've had massive flooding. And I just so happened to be in some of that massive flooding and probably the scariest thing I've ever experienced weather-wise in a car. So me and one of my work colleagues, we're driving, we're trying to get home. We've been on the road for three days. We're on Highway 6 coming up from Houston. And all of a sudden we hit like a roadblock and nobody's moving and we're wondering what's going on. So we're creeping through traffic, creeping through traffic. We finally get up there. We realize there's a river going across the highway six, the main road, the gas stations out of electricity, the power's out there. Everyone's crowded there. News trucks, fire trucks are coming. Police are coming, ambulances, all this stuff. There's cars on the side of the road, stranded. It's crazy. So we backtrack all the way back to Brenham, Texas, which happened to get extreme flooding. They got the most rain out of everyone in, in all the counties in Texas that day. And we were sitting there. We could not get on the highway. Every, uh, every major road getting out of there was closed. Police were there like getting all the water, emergency situations. It was bad. We're in a uh, Dodge Dart in Brenham, Texas. Uh, we're trying to figure out if there's a 
tornado outside of our window. Obviously, lightning's pretty severe. Um, can't can't get on the road. Roads are flooded. Um, we're surrounded by water. And uh, oh yeah, it's Travis's first first week on the job. So finally, a good Samaritan comes over and he says, "Hey guys, you from out of town?" We're like, "Yeah." He says. You might want to get a hotel room. You're not getting out of here tonight. Luckily, we did that because we were the second to last people to get a hotel room. I mean, we went to the hotel. There were people that lived in the town that couldn't even get to their houses that were stranded there. And they couldn't even get a hotel either. And for those of you who don't know, Brenham is where Bluebell ice cream is made. And some of the plant workers were stuck at the Bluebell ice cream plant. Probably not the worst place to be stuck. Anyways. We made it back, safe and sound. We were in a Dodge Dart, which isn't the best vehicle for driving around flooded roads, but we made it back. And now the weather's just kind of crazy. These bugs are going crazy around my ears. I'm telling you, it's just weird. I think it's El Nino, weird stuff going on. Major, major floods. So it's gonna make fishing really interesting in the next few weeks. These bugs better go away. Just got our groceries. Stephanie. What? What is this? Oh, what, what is, is this? this? Yeah, what is this stuff you always get? It's called kombucha. It's made from fermented black tea with probiotics. Uh -huh. It's really good. You should try it. Yeah, it's really good. Fermented black tea with uh, just, microbes. Justin hates it. Looks and sounds delicious. It's so good for you though. Why, why do you eat yogurt, Justin? Because it's tasty. No, it helps your gut. So your your gut bacteria and your gut microflora. It helps cleanse the body. So your your system's cleanse is what you're saying. Yeah. Winston. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh. Yoda's Yoda's lost. I'm not sure if Frenchies were made for Texas heat. Alright guys, so last week we uh, talked about doing some QA off Facebook. So Skylar asks, in your opinion, what's the best length for a spinnerbait rod? I fish mostly around standing wood cover and cypress trees. I've always used a six foot nine inch rod. Six foot nine inch rod is really good for, you know, pitching and target casting spinnerbaits around. I'd say it's a really good choice actually. Um, you know, me personally, I like seven foot for overall spinnerbait fishing because usually if I'm fishing a spinnerbait, I'll also double that as a chatterbait rod and I can, uh, I can get more distance out of that. And I, I just like the, the leverage on it as well, especially if I'm fishing around cover. Um, the 6.9 is, is definitely better for making short little uh, roll casts, but I like the seven foot, you know, just as general purpose. You can still roll cast with it, but you can get that good overhand cast and get more distance as well. Honey, what time is it? Yes. Uh, time to grill some food. It's time to grill some food. Yeah. So I went. I went on the uh, on the food today. We're having we're having steaks. Mm -hmm. Welcome uh, to my office. This is Stephanie's office. Yeah. Wait a second here. Um, mm -hmm. Are we even allowed in here? Uh. Yeah. Why not? Look at your look at your accolades. Jeez. <laughs> Whoa, guys. We got a uh, Kilgore College Rangerette. I don't think any of your fans even know what that is. They don't? I don't know. All right, they should go comment, Google it. Comment, see, see who knows about the Rangerettes. Uh, if you know who the Rangerettes are, give a thumbs up, you're a big Texan, okay? We'll, we'll, do, a, we'll do a full review of Stephanie's office in the future. Um, honey, it was, a good, it was a good sneak preview. Yeah. We'll see ya. 
We'll see you out there at the grill over okay. in my my station. Okay. I'll come. I'll come meet you out there. Okay, you come meet. Uh, the grill is my area. <laughs> Don't have much control, but I got control over the grill. This is my this is my backyard pride and joy right here. This this big green egg. So we're doing some steaks on that tonight. It's gonna be delicious. Come along for the ride. Entertainment while you're cooking steaks, uh, watching watching your dog chase the flies. Okay guys, here's what you want to do on the steaks on the big green egg. Open up that lid or on the cap on the top here. Let that thing get going. 500, 600 degrees. Get you some good steaks. Throw them on there. Three minutes on each side. Completely close off the vents down there and up top. Let it simmer for another three minutes and they are good to go. Catch y'all later. See you next week.